Jones before the curtain goes up and the curtain's going up on another Mitch and Murray production, which is very urban and earthy and gritty and fantastic. And this time it's an intervention. Uh, hey, Kate, how are you? Hi, David. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Have you, have you, welcome to Vancouver Presents. Uh, have you ever uh, done a Mitch and Murray show before? No, this is my first time. Oh, nice. So you're going into the deep end. They always do such amazing, amazing works that are like revealing. Like like uh, the intervention is now you're there's two of you mm -hmm. and you're not romantically linked, which is sometimes you go male, female. Oh, they must kiss at some point. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you're sort of like, uh, 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 well, well, you explain the story because the Middle East is involved, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, this is a story about a, a platonic friendship, uh, a very deep, very important friendship between two people who otherwise in the world might not have been friends, but happened upon each other at a pub one day and really got along. But the way that they get along is through arguing most of the time. It's, it's quite... Um, um, uh, an intense and conflicted relationship. Uh, and the Middle East comes in, as you mentioned, in that she is quite leftist. The character I play is quite leftist and he is quite conservative. And so we find out at the start of the play that even though they've been friends for a long time, their political views actually don't line up. Oh, it's when um, when, some, when suddenly someone, like you're, everything's going along tickety-boo and then someone set, drops a truth bomb and you're like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know. I didn't know you felt that way about that thing. That's like um, when and it, your, parent, your grandparents are racist and you're like, what? <laughs> absolutely. It recontextualizes the relationship. So uh, for these two, I feel like that political fight is uh, covering up the deeper uh, conflict in their relationship or the, the deeper ways that they fail to connect to each other. So anytime they kind of get mad at each other, they bring up politics, especially she does. Um, as opposed to really getting into the true issue at heart. Oh, oh we're going to talk about this thing that's over here as opposed yes. to the thing that's here. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So uh, 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 the, the you're working with this other, uh, and now you're being so intimate in the sense of truthful with this other actor. Have you worked with him before? I have not. I have only met him once at the photo shoot. I am very excited to dive into this as you said like totally intimate and exciting relationship together i think it'll be really great look at you stepping into so much fresh snow yes, <laughs> right? <yes>, absolutely <laughs> what what, is, what attracted you to the show like uh I, i'm assuming aaron was um uh he he always finds these really great urban scripts um mm. and, and so uh did he go, Kate, can I have coffee with you? I, I want to talk to you about a show or like, how did it I saw it on the Equity E-Drive and, and to, to rewind a little, my partner is Charlie Gallant. I don't know if you yeah, know him. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> he's amazing. He's an actor in town and he's done two productions with them, uh, both of which have been excellent. So when I saw Mitch and Marie's um, audition notice come up on the E-Drive, I just clicked and I liked the brief. And they also said that you needed a very strong English accent. And I happen to have a very good Yorkshire accent. And I was like, well, I might as well go out for it. Uh, and I did the first, I was in Winnipeg at the time because Charlie was in The Sound of Music. And so I, I taped the first audition, sent it off. And then I had a call back with Aaron and it, um, it went really, really well. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Mm. Uh, so now, we one of the things we're doing we're being more uh careful with our actors and their vulnerability uh, mm. uh uh i guess you don't have an intimacy coach for for this show because there's no like you know uh, rolling around in bed <laughs> no but i i heard i heard I'm, I'm gonna roll off for a second to just grab my phone yeah, so yeah i'm listening to a podcast and they had a new thing Mm. The, 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 uh, oh, I apologize that I'm looking it up really quick. Oh my gosh, a behavioral fine. health consultant. Oh. It, it's a podcast called Stage Combat, and it's about a guy who went through mental and emotional um, anguish when working on Billy Elliot. Uh, and he has a psychiatrist, and he said, yeah, theater should have a behavioral health consultant. 
because they have to go through these very intense emotions and then yeah. you know the director goes see you later see you tomorrow <laughs> right? um what do you think of that do you think that's the next step is to have like a, a when you're doing a heavy show like this that do care should be taken with the actors i think that that would be a great idea i think that that's tricky right having having someone come in to do that might be a great solve because often it does fall in the director to um, cultivate the care in the room and to make sure that everyone is being taken care of in, in a situation like this um because we do go to to really intense places and and how to modulate yourself out of that and walk back into your day and i think what's happened historically is that every actor has their own toolkit of how to do that and or you and, hope they do <laughs> or you I, but that's the thing but you don't know for sure if that's happening so i guess that kind of thing could really help in a situation like this. I, I always say that your body doesn't know that you're pretending. Totally. Right? So you're feeling the feelings, the intense feelings every day. And it's, it's you know, for, this is a short run. So that's, that's okay. But if this was like a three or four month run, I would be, I'd be in some therapy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What is, what is the most thrilling part about the script right now for you? Because you're just, you're just starting into rehearsals, correct? Yeah, we're starting next week, actually. Oh, how exciting. So what's I the know. part when you flip through it, you go, ooh, I'm looking forward to this. Oh, the wit is really fast and sharp. Uh, the, the dialogue is very funny. I spent a lot of time in classical theater. I did four years at Shaw, and I've spent the last six at Bard. So I, I spend a lot of my time um, kind of having to interpret heightened text and find the best way to say something. And this is so accessible, uh, right right in the modern uh, vernacular. So it, it's um, it's great for me to get to do a modern piece, honestly. Nice, nice. And and uh, I'm assuming he his character is British as well. Yes, he's he, and he's a little more middle class, and I'm a little more lower class. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, uh, um, I think now is a great time because uh, uh, you, you're you're just barely touching on the show right now. Now is a mm -hmm. great time for you to sell this show. What you're going to do is, I, I always do, do this with my guests, you're going to uh, look right at the uh, your little green dot on your laptop. I'm going <laughs> to count you in and you're going to convince Vancouver and the Lower Mainland why they should come and see. And now, is it intervention or the intervention? It's an intervention. An intervention. I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to tell them why they should shell out their hard-earned bucks for an intervention. Okay. Ready? Three, yep. two, one, go. Uh, hi, Vancouver. Um, we live right now in a society that prioritizes romantic relationships over friendships. And even in that kind of, um, even in that, uh, that theme, that zeitgeist, that mode, we still find it easy to cast people off when they don't fit in our lives. Um, there's so much accessibility to a million partners online, uh, a million uh, things to experience by yourself that I don't think that we give friendships the amount of time and effort they deserve. And this is a play about navigating a difficult friendship with humor and sensitivity. And it made me, when I read it, wanted it made me want to go and call all of my friends and put in the work that they deserve. How about oh, that? Love that. <laughs> I love that. I was almost tearing up. It's oh like, no. Sarah McLaughlin to come in. <laughs> stranger <laughs> to come up behind it. As soon as I said we live in a society, I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh the only other thought that is pops into my head as we're doing this, of course, Vancouver and Victoria has had a uh, controversy with shows that deal with the Middle East uh, and stuff. Does this show, does this show, like, I mean, we don't want to alert people right, to the mm. start doing letter writing campaigns, but you go, yeah, this one kind of goes into that kind of area where there, there might be some, I hate trigger warnings, but, mm. but there is caution as they argue, you might find that you are, being triggered by what they're arguing about? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, Mike Bartlett, the playwright, has been um, consciously vague about which uh, conflict he's talking about. Mm. Uh, the play is was written in 2014. 
um, and to certainly set after the war in Iraq. Um, but he's he he doesn't lay into details. Uh, there is a bit at the end where uh, Christian's character reflects on um, an Arab man he knows and is concerned about his welfare in the war. But other than that, I wouldn't say that there would be any specific trigger warnings about this current conflict that's happening right now in Israel and Palestine. Nice. That's, that's uh, Well, that's uh, also good to note that it was written in 2014. So, uh, uh, cool. Well, that's good. So people do not have to be uh, 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 cautious in 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 that regard if they want that to... being said of course like i'm i'm a white person who is not involved in either side of this conflict so mm. uh who knows who knows what um could activate someone in this like very very tricky time just want yeah. to say that i have to say that's one of the things that i love about mitch and marie shows and i'm sure that's what attracted to you is that he always has uh what was that christmas one that they they just did that was uh uh, you just were like going, oh, 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 as the characters were talking. Um, yes, yes, that was um, that was the one that Aaron wrote, Instantaneous Blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. so good. Um, well, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kate, for talking with me. Uh, uh, it's always exciting to talk with an actor who's like not even in rehearsal yet. They're just in the, the research stage of the process. I'm sure I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic show. Are you excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you very much, Kate. It was thank great you so much, with you. David. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.